the saddest backstories of Naruto. The Naruto story is centered around the tragedies that people go through in their ninja based lives. Like literally in the first episode, we see that a so called natural disaster appeared to wreak havoc on the main protagonist's home village. It is easy to say that a lot of the characters in the show didn't have the best upbringing, but who could you say had the saddest and most sympathetic backstory of them all? While it can be somewhat subjective as to what is considered sad, I'm going to lay out the following characters that had a childhood that many of us wouldn't want to mimic. I'm only going to go over a few since pretty much every main character has something sad going for them and I'm not trying to be here at all. Day. The obvious first choice for who had the saddest backstory would be Naruto. Since day one of his birth, he already had to struggle. Within his first minute of being born, he was already subject to being put in a baby body bag by Obito. This was also the day his destiny was sealed by having the nine-tailed fox sealed within him by Minato of all people, along with the fact that Naruto's parents died the same day as well. As he grows up, he is shunned by the village for having the nine tails in him, being often called the demon himself. It sucks that he was just ordained into being a monster from the jump, since he never really did anything wrong against the village in the first place. This is when he decides to lash out against the village by becoming the village jokester, stuff like pulling pranks and defacing the Hokage faces come to mind. If they view him as a monster, he'll be sure to act like one. If it weren't for his teammates and comrades along the way, we could have seen Naruto in different light, maybe being more so evil as opposed to him just being a nuisance to the village. I want to save a lot of what I have for Sasuke in the future video, but I think you get the general idea as to why he would be considered to have the saddest backstory. His whole clan was packed up by Itachi, his older brother, and is wanted to seek revenge by killing his older brother. And some people may not agree, but I would put Itachi in contention for having the saddest backstory as well, given that once we learn the truth about Itachi, it can be somewhat sympathetic as to why he did what he did. He witnessed war at a young age and didn't want that to manifest any further. So while he took drastic measures, he did so because he felt it was the only option to do. I talk more about that in my tragic Itachi video, so I'll leave that in the description below. But overall, the fact that Itachi was able to put respect on the Leaf Village's name after what they did shows a lot of remorse from Itachi and him wanting to look at things for the bigger picture. Pain is another character that is deserving of being marked as having a tragic backstory. He experienced and lived through a war that his nation wasn't even supposed to be a part of. His parents being killed by Leaf Shinobi was step one in throwing Nagato into madness with his actions. He would later find friends that shared the same sentiment and not wanting war anymore, them being Yahiko and Konan, which would lead them to forging the first version of the Akatsuki, a version that sought to seek true peace in the ninja world. But after Yahiko died, Nagato felt as though his philosophy of peace was foolish, noting that in a world full of death and hatred, only through having losses and going going through war in general would ultimately lead to peace. It's a messed up philosophy to adopt in general, but if one were to be put in Nagato's shoes, one would also come to understand the pain he went through in order to have that mindset. It wasn't until Naruto showed his never dying spirit to carry the will of Jiraiya and Yahiko that Pain decided to let Naruto obtain peace the correct way. And I myself would achieve inner peace if you decided to like the video. While you're doing that, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more Naruto content as well. If we reach 1 million subscribers, I'll go back in time to when my friend told me to watch One Piece when it was at 5 169 subscribers and actually plan to catch up with the show. Zooey mama. This next pick might be a little bit underrated, but I would make the argument that Neji also had a decent enough tragic backstory to make the list. Even though Neji is a part of the Kyuga clan, he was in the branch house as opposed to the main house. That already set him up for failure, given that the branch house is the one to protect the customs set by the main house. Simply because Neji's father, Hisashi, was born after his brother, Hiyashi, the two were separate by clan houses, and one had dominion over the other. This would cause resentment between them, specifically after Neji was chosen to have the branded curse seal. Things would fluster even more after Neji's father died, seemingly so to protect the Hyuga clan and its secrets, but it was later revealed that Hisashi insisted on being the sacrifice, stating that he was doing so not only for the clan and village, but for his brother as well. Until Neji knew of that fact, he had resentment towards the main house, as well as having the preconceived notion that everyone had a predetermined fate and that we're all bound to the limitations set to us by birth. It wasn't until Naruto came and checked him up, saying that you'd just be holding yourself back as a result of that line of thinking. This helped change Neji's view on life for the better, realizing that one's destiny is what you make of it. It's thanks to that, that Neji decided to die himself, becoming the pencil stick holder of the leaf. Now I already talked about some sad backstories, but in my opinion, Gaara just has to be the most messed up one out of them all. Before he was even born, he was set to be the Jinchuriki of the One Tails due to freaking budget cuts. Then after being prematurely born, his mother Karua passed away. Gaara throughout his childhood terrified the villagers simply just by being a Jinchuriki. Even if he were trying to be kind and caring to them at first, 
first, but would unknowingly hurt or kill those around him. The only person Gar had a close attachment to was his uncle Yashirama, especially when he described what it is to feel pain. Noting that physical pain can be fixed through time and medicine, while the pain Gara felt in his heart would be healed through love. Gara was cool with this until Yashirama made an assassination attempt on him due to an order given by Gara's father of all people. Gara tried to find solace in that, saying that it was just an order, but Yashirama lied to him, saying that he volunteered to kill him, further elaborating that he always hated Gara for the death of Korua. After blowing himself up in an attempt to kill Gara, Gara's mindset changed and only sought to live for himself by killing those around him for pleasure. Also, his father did like five more assassination attempts on him. Father of the year, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't until his fight with Naruto did Gara see the error of his ways and seeks to protect those around him, giving him new strength, allowing him to be the best candidate for being the fifth Kazakage. Luckily, during the war arc, Gara had some closure in knowing that his uncle and mother truly did love him and that his father was sorry for all that he put him through. You know, after all I said about these backstories, especially Gara's, I begin to question, how the heck did this air on Cartoon Network? Oh, yeah, yeah I hate you, Gara. You killed my sister because you were pre you were born. You, you, this was your fault for having a demon inside you, even though you had to put it inside you because of budget cuts. Here's our suicide bomb attempt. Chowder coming up next. Okay, it's obvious there needs to be some sort of ninja therapy lying around because these backstories are causing way more damage and harm than need be. But it was at least all for the sake of an amazing story. It's the reason why a lot of us gravitate towards the story of Naruto in general that there are struggles to be had, although fictional and over exaggerated, to make it so that everyone has had challenges to face against and as long as you have the determination to face against it, your spirit will never die. I know there are a lot of other backstories I didn't get a chance to mention, so I'll ask, would you guys like to see a part 2 to this video? And also, what characters would you make a note that have had tragic backstories as well? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm the Curly Hero Kage and I hope you all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.